Recovery is stupendous. Achievable. Hope. Freedom. 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 Empowering. It's unique to everyone. It's a journey, not a destination. Getting a new lease on life. It's finding restoration after you fall down. Recovery is having the freedom to enjoy life. For me, it was finding a way to really love myself. My recovery is possible in part because of my own sense of purpose. Welcome to Montana's Peer Network Recovery Talks podcast. I'm Jim Haney. And I'm Andy Daniel. Thanks so much for tuning in to another episode. And welcome to February. And those of you who follow us uh, will know that in February, we tend to focus on love and relationships Today, Andy and I are going to be talking about uh, relationships in recovery. Yeah, I think relationships can be difficult in the best of circumstances. And if you throw in uh, recovery into that mix, it's even harder sometimes. Yeah, I I would agree. I think there's some unique challenges. I, I, I think people who have diagnoses have some unique challenges. And when you're talking about dating, it, it's it's difficult. I mean, I, the things that kind of come to mind are like, when do you tell somebody you meet them and you're interested in them? They're interested in, when do you tell them you have a diagnosis? Right? Like when when is a when is a good time to tell them? I mean, do you tell them in the first conversation you have with them, or do you get to know them a while and then say, oh yeah, by the way, uh, you know, I, I think it's a dilemma that most all of us face in in recovery and with relationships what what do you think about that Annie what do you what do you go with you tell them right away or you you wait or you know it, it really is person by person I guess I haven't had really great luck telling people about that more that they're not that they're unsupportive of recovery but that they don't necessarily agree with my chosen path of recovery. Um, Mm -hmm. You know, there's a lot of medication stigma out Mm -hmm. out there and Mm -hmm. that is my recovery path. And that is the most successful recovery path that I have ever had. And Mm -hmm. so, you know, if somebody says, well, why are you taking that medicine? You don't need all that. You know, that kind of stuff makes it really difficult. And so, um, I tend to not say anything for a really long time. Ah, so you, you kind of hold back yes. to get them hooked, to get them hooked first. <laughs> <laughs> and then, and then, and then you, you reel them in later. Okay. All right. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I, I mean, I, okay. So, so my wife and I, you know, have been together five years now I think almost five years I think and so and when I say I think I mean like dating and you know I know when we got married um (laughs) but like with with what I do for a living my job that that's up front that's the first conversation because I can remember so I met my wife um online and so you know you can sort the search right by people who drink or don't drink, you know, and, and those of you who have never done this, when you, when you click the button to the non drinkers, your, your pool, <laughs> right? Andy's laughing. She yep. knows exactly <laughs> what I'm going to say. Your pool shrinks to a, a fishbowl. I mean, it, it shrinks considerably like, you know, like you went from all these people down to like three and I, I can't remember how many it was. It was like pretty, pretty tiny. So then I think I bumped it up to occasional or something. Yeah. I think I bumped it up. Right. I think there's one like above, you know, just to like expand the pool a little bit, you know, but the first conversation when you meet someone like in our society usually is what do you do? Right. So how do I say, Hey, I'm the executive director of a nonprofit. Well, the next logical question is, Oh, what's the nonprofit? Right. Yeah. So Montana's peer network. Oh, well, what's the peer network? Well, recovery organization, you know what I mean? So it's like, well, how'd you get involved with that? I mean, it's so like, you know, you just have to say something right, right up front about what what you do what i do for a living and 
I'm a person in recovery, but then I think the details wait. I think I waited a little bit, a little bit till we were seeing each other for a little while. Um, so I think if I were in recovery yeah. from a substance use issue, that would be an easier subject mm-hmm. or an easier way to, I don't know, weed out the people who aren't going to be compatible, right? Because I, I don't have a substance use history. I, it, it isn't a big deal for me to, to date somebody who drinks occasionally or, you know, whatever. And so there's no question on the little online forums about whether you have a mental health diagnosis. Right, right. Exactly. So, exactly. Right, um, right. So right. those ones are harder to tease yeah. out. Right, right. But it's just about, it's just about the quantity of alcohol you consume. Right. That, that, that's what the check boxes right. are, right? Like yeah. drink daily, drink weekly, drink sometimes, occasionally, whatever it is, you know, never, right? Like, right. Right. And and it is really hard and it would be cool if they had a thing on there like for people who identified as being in recovery, like like you could check that and then that would give you other choices because I think it is a real challenge. And then I mean for me, I mean I met somebody who was accepting and um supportive and so that was that was great. But I know beforehand you and I were talking and you, you have searched online because you live in a small community like like me in Montana, right? Yes. And so, you know, I'm curious. What, so what was that like for you? I mean, when you you first searched your your town, your small town, it's tiny, right? Like the pool is small. Yeah, it is. And so I've been divorced for, well, it's been more than 10 years, actually, and haven't seriously dated anyone in that whole time. There have been things kind of off and on, but nothing really that serious. And Uh once you get through all of the, you know, you've got a list of people who live close Uh and you get through that list and there's nobody there that looks like they're compatible. Uh First of all, you start to get discouraged, but then, you know, you're on every once in a while checking to see if there's anybody new. And... I feel like it gets harder the longer you search. Like I've been on and off the dating sites because I'll get fed up with there's nobody new here, mm-hmm. you know, and, and these people just don't fit what I'm looking for. And and mm-hmm. part of that is that I I have no intention of living with anybody or getting married again. Mm-hmm. Just it's just the way that I like my life mm-hmm. to be. And mm-hmm. most people who are my age are looking for someone to marry or uh, they've got kids, and yes, I have children, but I don't need to raise more children. So, uh, yeah, yeah, you know, yeah. and so there's there's just, there's already a small pool of people. And then when you start subtracting, I don't want to get married. I don't want to help somebody raise their kids. I uh-huh. don't want to be with somebody who drinks on a daily basis. Uh-huh. Um, it just keeps getting smaller and, and smaller. Smaller, and, smaller, and, yep. And up until this point, it was really hard for me to travel because I do have children. Two of them are out of the house now, so I just have one. And so it would be easier for me to travel to to meet somebody and, you know, to go on some dates. But I wouldn't want to convince somebody to move here if I wasn't going to live with them, you know? Yeah. So I met my wife online. And similar to you, I mean, I think there's these challenges. And I think, you know, I think back, I mean, I, I... wanted a relationship i wasn't looking to get married but i also wasn't looking for like a one-night stand kind of thing and i think there's a lot of that on there yeah you have to kind of kind of like weed through weed through that stuff but yeah i mean i remember the you know the search locally here oh it's small then you go a little bigger you know include like bozeman okay you know and then i had to go like bigger and and bigger and I think I ended up with like a 250 mile radius, which included, I live close to Wyoming, (laughs) Wyoming, Idaho, like, you know, and so, you know, it's just like you, if you did a 250 mile search, it'd give you Canada, you know. Yeah, I get Canada a lot, actually. Yeah, (laughs) right. And so, you know, like this huge, and so, you know, I met my wife, I mean, she was from Eastern Idaho, 
and we're like 200 miles apart. And you think, gosh, I don't know, 200 miles, holy cow, you know, like, I mean, it, it's, it's worked out, you know, like, um, if I hadn't expanded that search, we never would have, we never would have, uh, would have met. And, you know, it just starts online, you know, talking, getting to know one another and then phone calls. And then of course, eventually you meet up halfway for a, a date. One nice thing is we have Yellowstone national park in between. So that's an easy kind of halfway point to meet and great activity go do stuff and then yeah and then eventually i mean she and i started you know it was like oh man there's a long ways like 200 miles you know and then the winter you know the roads are bad and it, it was hard and then eventually you know it was like well do we move closer to one another and you start having kind of those conversations and eventually she moved here with me um and so I mean, it just worked out really, really well, but it's, it's really challenging, I think, in recovery. And like you said at the beginning, I mean, dating in general is challenging, but I think, you know, when you're in recovery, man, it's, it's hard. It's really, it's really difficult. How do you tell people your experiences or how you got in recovery or, you know, or like support, you know, like you need support from the person and, I mean, you got to give them some background and, you know, like some, some tools in their toolbox to help you. It's really, there's a lot of challenges. And I think it's something that doesn't get talked about a lot because initially when you go to treatment, it's like, don't date, don't date anybody. Don't make any changes in your life. Just, you know, get yourself stabilized. And, you know, but the reality is, is that I think having people in your life who love you and can help support you boy, that's powerful. That can go a long ways. So the other, the other thing that sort of happened in my dating or not dating is, is when I first got divorced, I wanted to date and I thought I knew what I wanted. And if I couldn't find somebody who met that criteria, I would be like, oh, well, let's give it a try. And it, uh, and it wouldn't work. And so I think part of not being able to find somebody now is that I'm very, very specific on what I will and will not accept in another person. Uh, because uh -huh. I ignored that off and on. And things didn't go well. In your partner, you're talking about. Yeah, yeah, in my partner. Yeah. So yeah. I'm not willing to compromise on a lot of those things anymore. Because it's not, it's not going to lead anywhere. Mm -hmm. Do you think that's an age thing? Do you think that comes from, as we, as we get older, we look at relationships differently, right? Yeah, and really, what kind of person do I want to be with, right? Do I just, do I want to be with somebody for like that one night stand or a couple of weeks or, you know, whatever? Mm -hmm. Do I want to put the effort mm -hmm. in for that? Or do I want to find somebody that is going to be longer term and that um, we're much more compatible with. So when I first got divorced, I was just, you know, if it's a couple weeks, it's a couple weeks. It doesn't matter. We'll just, you know, date whoever. Right. And it's, just, I'm just not in that place anymore. And I don't know if it's age or if it's just getting farther away from the divorce. Right. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Like you're more settled with yourself. Yeah. And, yeah. I yeah. know what I yeah. want and yeah. I, I need to stay true to that in order to maintain re my recovery and be happy and yeah yeah how so you, you brought up divorce and you know divorce is challenging and I know for me it was it, it, it was like devastating and it really brought up a lot of old I'm gonna call them symptoms came out right because of the emotional instability did you did you experience anything like that okay well that's when i ended up in inpatient treatment oh okay um, so it did and my so suicide attempt so yes so it did yeah yeah the marriage started to split up in august i was in inpatient treatment in october and i had a suicide attempt in december wow yeah wow yeah yeah i i remember I was, I had decided to go 
uh, backpacking on a, a solo trip and got out in the back country because I thought, oh, this is going to be great. It'll clear my head and, you know, I'll go spend a few days and, you know, be great. And I was going up this um, ridge line, this steep ridge line. And I don't even remember how I mentally got to this point, but it was like, I remember I'm hiking along and all of a sudden it was like, it was like somebody pulled the plug out from like the refrigerator, you know, and how the refrigerator just, you know, like that was literally how I felt. And I just completely broke down like physically, mentally, and emotionally right there on the trail on my hands and knees. Like it, I don't know if it was like building up in me. Like I don't, I can't really even remember beforehand, like the miles beforehand as I was going, but it just boom, just hit me. And all of a sudden just like, and it was like, Oh my gosh, you know? And I, I, you know, was, was, was crying and I was in tons of distress and, and it was like, Oh my gosh. And there was this part of me that was, got scared because I was out in the wilderness and that's always been for me kind of a safe haven and always sort of does the opposite sort of recharges my, my batteries, if you will, you know, and it was like, Whoa, you know, and it was just, and I don't know how long I, I was there just, I was like down for the count. I mean, and it was like, I remember there was this like survival piece of me that was like, get up, <laughs> turn around and walk as fast as you can back to your car and get your ass home. There was this part of me that was almost like a drill sergeant because there was this fear, this danger in me that I would just go walk off the next cliff or something. It was just, I was in such so distraught just it was really bizarre and I did get home I mean I turned around and and did you know get myself back you know to the trailhead and 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 drove home and then as soon as I got home I I called one of my supporters and said I I gotta meet with you like now (laughs) like you know and that was something I hadn't experienced for years but that emotional distress from the relationship I don't know if it was just building up and then I don't know just something just boom in that moment just wham well and one of the major problems when I got divorced was that all of my friends were his friends so I lost my husband but I also lost almost all of my social contacts uh at the uh same time that's hard. And you didn't have anybody in, were you in recovery then or no? Not really. I mean, I had started okay. some therapy, which I think probably led to part of the problems mm-hmm. in the marriage, right? I started to change. Sure. But, but you didn't have those tools in the toolbox like you, you would today. Right, right. And so, yeah. I mean, in, in a way, <laughs> the... The divorce precipitated some really difficult work that I needed to do for myself. I don't sure. think I'd have gotten into recovery mode if that hadn't happened. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because I probably wouldn't have been hospitalized. I probably wouldn't have had a suicide attempt. So, uh-huh. Uh-huh. I mean, uh-huh. I'd been on medication and been in therapy and stuff, but it wasn't really, I wouldn't call it recovery. Maintenance, maybe. Beforehand. Yeah, yeah, before. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah I mean, um, yeah, it, it's so traumatic. I mean, it really is when you're, when they, you you kind of get to that point where you're like, okay, we're getting divorced or it ends. I mean, it's, it's pretty deep. I'm just, I'm looking up the life stressor scale <laughs> and divorce is, is second death of your spouse is a 100 that's that's right. maxed out divorce is 73 marital separation is 65 
jail term is 63. I mean, it's up there. I mean, it's a huge, huge, huge one. And uh, I think it's really, you know, if you're in recovery, it's, boy, it, it's really challenging and can really test test you. And you got to have those those tools in the toolbox, this, you know, support and, and what are you going to do? And even if you're leaving a bad relationship, I think it's still the impact is is, is pretty high. Yeah. And I think it's important to take the time. If you've had something like that happen, it's important to take the time and really take stock of where you are in your life and in your recovery and, and kind of try to figure out what it is that you want or what things are most important to you. And well, I'm not saying eliminate everybody who falls outside of that. I think it's good to be aware of you know, these are the things that I find important. This person doesn't fit this one thing. We can try it. But, you know, the more you try, the more you realize which pieces you have to have and which are negotiable. Well, there's got to be, Andy. I mean, I there's got to be some somebody out there, your opposite, you know, who's saying the same thing, right? Whether that's, uh, you know, here in Montana or maybe across the border in, in Canada. <laughs> Canada. <laughs> well, you I know. finally have a passport because that was a thing, right? Like, hey, oh, you should come yeah. see me. And I'm like, I, uh, no, I can't get right. there. <laughs> right. Gosh, I didn't think about that. Yeah. Right. You got to have a passport. <laughs> yeah. 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 Yeah, I mean, I, you know, it's, it's tough. Like I said, I mean, the dating thing, I mean, I think, you know, you really got to expand your search. And I, for me, it's, it's, it turned out well taking that chance to go even further, you know, and even though it seems like, oh, wow, you're four, four hours apart. I don't know, for my wife and I, it's turned out really well. And if we hadn't taken that chance, we there's no way we would have ever, would have ever met. I do think online dating is better because you can filter the people. Yes. Right? Yes. Uh, as opposed to getting set up with someone or you go to a, a social event, you know, or something, right? And you don't, <laughs> you have no clue, right? At least now you're starting with some, you got some info, you know, <laughs> to start. You, you got a little background going on, right? Yeah. So, because yeah. I, I would never meet somebody at a social event. I have a hard time talking to people I like at uh, social events. So, you right. know, talking to somebody right. I didn't know would be like totally out of the question. Yeah. Yeah. And the other thing I, I thought with the online uh, dating thing was, you know, you have email, phone calls, and then in person. Yeah. So you you start off with the email thing because of the security stuff, right? On yeah. the, you know, you don't have people's phone numbers, you're emailing. And I, I thought that was kind of cool because you can kind of just email back and forth with someone, you know, and just get comfortable or get a sense of them through that without, I mean, there's not much commitment there, you know, just you can ask some questions and have some dialogue and carry that on for days or weeks before you even get on a, phone call yeah. with somebody yeah yeah all right well february is uh again a month we focus on relationships and we're going to have some other podcasts this month on relationships if you're listening to this early in the month there should be some other ones but we do have some guests that we're going to be spotlighting talking to to some folks and so that's what we're going to do for february is just kind of focus on relationships in recovery getting different perspectives yeah, if you've got something you'd like to share with us, uh, send us an email. You can email me at andy, A-N-D-I, at mtpeernetwork.org. We'd love to hear what you have to say. Absolutely. And uh, keep tuning in to podcasts. And if you have other topics also that you'd like to hear us talk about, let us know that too, because we're always searching for different topics that we we, uh, that our listeners would find interesting. So thanks so much. Recovery works and recovery is possible. Recovery works and recovery is possible. Recovery works, recovery is possible. Recovery is possible. <laughs> recovery works and recovery is possible. Recovery works and recovery is possible. Recovery works and recovery is possible.
recovery works and recovery is possible. Recovery is possible.